I've been thinking about my best friend, Brian, who shares a jail cell with the crazy black guy who, who wants to punk me, who wants to swing at the side of my head when I'm not looking. And if he had swung while I was looking, I would have got in a very serious fight because I would have tried to kill him. And then they would have kept me there for indefinitely. And that was the goal of the sheriff's department was to keep me there. They're like, we're not trying to kill you. We didn't try to kill you. But it's like, uh, guess who doesn't have a gun specifically so that the people inside that hate me who are a reflection of people on the outside that hate me because this is a big world and you know that I have danger because I have this drug lab spokesperson problem because I've been talking for, about it for so long. You know it. So that uh, all I'm saying, okay, so I'm, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about Brian San Nicholas, who is the basis for Colorado Kumite and he's also the basis for Troy P.A which might not be the name. Um, Colorado Kumite is the story of a Taekwondo expert who um, goes to train at the Olympics and meets a girl and then falls into this pit fighting ring. And I'm not gonna tell you the whole story, but it's based on him, it's like Karate Kid. I didn't even know that there was a Cobra Kai movie out, but my story's better because it's like a kid growing up on the beach with Master Lee who puffs on his inhaler after each Taekwondo session and everyone like kicks kicks trees and stuff and gets real tough. Um, so there's that story which has his name in it, in the synopsis. And then there's my other story, Tropier, which is the story of a guy who was getting tormented in prison and getting punked constantly um, by much scarier looking people because everything in jail is about how scary you look. Like, it's like the moment you get there, it's like, crap, I gotta shave my head because I gotta look tough. But I, I actually wanna grow out my hair. So, what I'm trying to say is I came up with a story where with the, with the character named Ryan, which is based on him again, but it was almost based on this other guy who said that he was in there for, um, burning down a courthouse, which that did happen. The, the crime happened. Um, I didn't see his picture, but I, I saw someone else's picture. Um, but I don't know. I, he was put with um, someone that looked like they were transgender. And I feel like they put uh, sex offenders and transgender people together and stuff like that. I don't really know. But apparently they weren't afraid to put this Taekwondo guy who is a... Here's the question. Um, in a town like this, could the Taekwondo guy be a drug trafficker who got set up by the cops? The answer is yes. Um, I, like I've said before, they sure like statutory rape. It's like their favorite crime because it's like the crime that you can get them for. That everyone, like the moment you're a sex offender, it's like, nope, you're guilty. I promise, no matter what. So, um, Brian St. Nicholas is someone we don't want to talk about ever, 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 because he committed a sex crime and he's a sex offender. The problem is um, no one knows if he is actually a sex offender. And if he is a sex offender, that story just sounds so weird. Um, the mother leaves the room to go brush her hair. She's minding her own business. And, well, <laughs> sorry, I'm, I still got the jail thing in me. The mother is brushing her hair and she walks into the other room because she's like looking in the mirror or something. In, the, in a very short amount of time, the child is saying, no, no, no. The child ends up on this guy's lap. And like, it's not a traumatic event for this child, but it might be a, a, a lesson for her. But the child is so young that it's like, how in the world could you be into an under five kid? Like, I mean, like, I, I just, it's just, it's just Ill illogical. It's like, you can't even have sex with an under five kid, even if like you're a disturbing, per like, I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm trying to analyze like the, the, the sex crime because I want to know if he's actually like a very dangerous sex criminal. Like if he could become one, because obviously nothing happened. Um, but he admits to it. He says, yeah, I, I did it, but he barely says it, but uh, he did He did admit to it, and I'm sure there's body cam footage. But the problem is we live in, in Colorado Springs where the body cam footage will go missing. So we don't really know like whether or not we can trust the police in this instance. Because if there's anything we know is that we can't trust the police. But we want to be able to trust the police because we need to trust the police because I need to know if this guy's actually a pedophile because I come home and I'm sitting there thinking about sending this guy commissary. 
I'm sitting there going, dude, I could send him 20 bucks. Like I don't have shit, but I'll send him 20 bucks. But if he actually is like, if he, if he's of anyone needs to be punished because he might learn his lesson, he's going to get out. He has a certain amount of time. He's an air force person. Like he sure doesn't seem like someone you want to convict. But all I'm saying is, um, do we actually know if this guy actually did it or not because of the nature of the Colorado Springs Police Department? And the answer is no, we don't. I know why. Because he's just an Air Force guy that found Colorado Springs that isn't actually a drug dealer. He's just someone that needs to be on the, the list of, of people that have committed sex crimes. He's not someone that had sex with a 15 year old that really, really, really wanted to have sex, was determined. That's, that's not what he's, he's there for. He's there for like, he has scared me. My community should be afraid of him. He should not be allowed to have certain jobs. Like that's why he's there. He needs to be punished. And then maybe he can join our society again because he has, will have learned his lesson. Because for some reason, something happened in his head, but there, there, are, there are lines. But the, problem, the real question is, can we trust the police to not be lying? And that's why this whole trust problem between the CSPD and people in Colorado Springs is, is, is a serious problem. Because I don't know Vince Niski, but what I do know is that you've been in charge for that long and it's not the feds by themselves. The cops always come with them. That's the thing. Like, so I, I know that y'all are sick in the head of anywhere I've ever lived. Colorado Springs is the scariest. Colorado Springs is hell on earth. Colorado Springs is the most beautiful place in the world. The best people in the world are here. This is an awful, 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 awful place. I would never wish this place on anyone. And Vince Niski has been in charge for that long. Vince Niski says that the police are allowed to get on the internet and encourage violence towards civilians, innocent civilians. The police are allowed to encourage terrorist attacks. That's what Vince Niski says, because you're not even going to get fired, much less get in trouble because it's not against, the, we have free speech in this country. But apparently saying some, saying, please be careful to my neighbor because he just threatened me who no one at, no one at, at X corporation works for the CIA. No one. I'm, I'm not allowed to say that because I'm afraid of going back to prison where you're going to try to get me sick because I'm still sick. I, I have a sore throat. The moment I leave, I have a sore throat. And I, I think that's just the nature of like this like incubation chamber with no ventilation where you're constantly changing people that you're joining. Like, and, and a lot of them don't take care of their health. Like you're changing people that you live with. All right, so all I'm saying is, um, yeah, we don't know if this guy's a, a drug, uh, if he's a drug dealer or if he's actually a pedophile because of the way Colorado Springs is, but we know and he's a pedophile and um, I still think he should be safe in jail and I think he could rejoin our society and be fine. Um, but I think that he shouldn't be allowed to be near a school zone. So, we don't actually know if he should be freed, right? That's, that's the problem because we don't trust the police because the police ha have proven that they're, they don't deserve trust. <laughs>